I've started building the QDX. It's a delightful little kit so far. Um, I've fitted the uh, capacitors and the six diodes and there are four axial inductors to fit. Uh, so they're all done. Um, and there are four PA transistors here uh, held uh, and heat synced by this uh, washer. Uh, so that's where I am so far. And the next step is to start winding uh, toroids. And there are quite a few of them, as you can see here, including this binocular toroid. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to do a little section about toroids and uh, why they're just not difficult. One of the things about building a kit uh, that seems to worry people is winding toroids. So at the risk of being accused of teaching grandmother to suck eggs, I thought I would uh, just try and explain it in a simple way. So here's a, a typical uh, small toroid. Don't worry about what it is or what compound it is or anything like that. Kits generally come with the right thing, so you don't have to worry about that. And we've got some wire here that we want to wind on it. I'm not going to worry about direction either. I'm just showing how to actually wind the coil. So a lot of people make this mistake. Let's put one winding on a coil, let's say. So we'll pass it through there like that. And back through. When you look at the top, that's just one winding, isn't it? Well, no, it isn't. Because if you look in the middle, it's got two. So what's right? Well, the simple answer is, every time the wire passes through the toroid, it's a winding. So one winding is simply that. It's just the wire through the toroid, and that is one winding. And the way I do it is, I get my one winding through like so, and then I come through again, and I start counting at two. So that's two. Pass it through again, making sure that it's not crossing the other one, and that's three. And if you look inside, you'll see there are three windings. So that is how to wind a standard toroid. Now we use another type of toroid that's known as a binocular toroid. And here's a typical binocular toroid. You'll see here that the edges are rounded over uh, to stop uh, or attempt to stop any damage to the enameled wire that we use. Sometimes these won't be rounded over, so you just need to be very cautious, maybe even just file it a little uh, around the edges. So how does this work? Uh, well, looking at our previous uh, toroid, this one, you would think that is one winding, wouldn't you? But it isn't. That's half a winding. In fact, that is one winding, just like so. And I'll explain that a little bit. What we have, if we look um, through the toroid, is our binocular toroid looks a little bit like this, where we have one hole through here like so, and another hole through here like so. Now what we can do with this is we can actually, if you can imagine cutting the toroid through here and folding the whole thing round, then this bit moves down here and we end up like this with one hole through. So now we've got rid of that bit and we've stitched it on the bottom here. So when we run a wire through there, that's a single winding. You notice it's gone through both halves of the core in exactly the same way. So when we've got our binocular toroid with our two holes through it, 
what this allows us to do is have half a winding, which you can't do with a standard toroide. So you can have a wire through and that is half a winding. You can pass it back through and that is one winding. We can go through again and that is now one and a half windings. I hope that made sense to you. If you've got any more questions, please just pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm nobody's genius with this sort of thing, but toroids seem to confuse people and they're really quite straightforward if you just follow the basic rules. I hope that helped. So here is the completed um, QDX, low band QDX. It will do 80, 60, 40, 30 and 20. Um, really nice little build. Uh, you saw it uh, when I had the various capacitors and inductors, etc. on. And um, today has been mainly winding coils uh, and toroids. So um, the first one that was done was the binocular um, toroid, uh, which um, you saw, um, saw in the previous section of the video, uh, how to wind. So that's, uh, that's done. Uh, this one is a single winding, but quite a, th a small toroid and quite a thick um, bit of wire, so um, a little trickier to do. Uh, these were straightforward enough. Um, the instructions are really good. Um, they give you the length of the wire to use, um, which means you don't have to keep pulling wire through and through and through and through. It makes life a lot easier. And they've gone on really nicely, and they're the three uh, bandpass filters. Uh, this one is probably the trickiest to do because it has several taps. Uh, if you follow the instructions, it's really very straightforward. And basically what you do is wind so many turns, then leave a loop out, and then wind so many turns and leave a loop out and so on. Um, and it's really well done. Um, and the instructions pretty much make it so you, you know, you can't really fail if you follow the instructions. Uh, the trickiest one to wind was probably this one. Um, now this is what's known as a trifiler winding. If you haven't come across trifiler windings, it's three wires twisted, probably about five turns per inch ish, and um, then you treat it as a single wire, wind the coil, uh, and then at the end of it, uh, you separate the wires, test them to make sure you've got them in pairs, insert the pairs in, and solder it. Um, but it's you do have to uh, create that trifiler winding. There are several ways of doing that and it's all explained in the instructions. Then the little LED uh, at the end and the various connectors at this end. It's gone together really, really well. Um, that should be it. There's no alignment to do. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to, uh, to see how it works. And what I'll do next is probably a little video on showing it uh, actually working. Um, obviously, I've still to do the smoke test, uh, but I do have the bag handy. So there we are, the low band QDX from QRP Labs.